This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. It's giving us three semicircles with area 36, and it wants to know the total area of these two red semicircles. If you wanna try it on your own, pause it right now, because I'm gonna solve it in three, two, one. First step, let's assign a radius to the smaller red semicircle, let's call it A. And let's assign a radius to the larger red semicircle, and let's call it B. So ultimately, we're trying to find the area of these two semicircles. For this top semicircle, it'll be pi a squared divided by 2. And for this bottom one, it'll be pi b squared divided by 2. So if we add these together, we'll have the total red area. Let's put a box around this and move it down here. Next, for the three blue semicircles, let's give them a radius of c. And since we already know these are 36, this is probably the easiest place to start. So for this semicircle here, we'll say pi c squared divided by 2 is equal to the area of 36. Now let's solve for c squared. So let's get rid of the denominator. We'll multiply both sides by two. On the left-hand side, we're left with pi c squared, and on the right-hand side, 36 times two is 72. Next, we can divide both sides by pi, and that'll give us c squared is equal to 72 over pi. This looks important. Let's put a box around it. And let's move the box up here. Now what's the next easiest thing we can do? So I'm noticing this bottom is the diameter of this semicircle and the top is made up of diameters of these two semicircles. We can set the top equal to the bottom. The radius of this semicircle is a, which means the diameter will be 2a. And the radius of this semicircle is c, which would make the diameter 2c. And on bottom, the radius of this semicircle is b, which makes this diameter 2b. So now to do top equals bottom. The top will be equal to 2a plus 2c, and that'll be set equal to the bottom of 2b. Now to simplify this, everything's got a 2, so let's divide everything by 2. And that'll leave us with a plus c is equal to b. On this one, we isolated the c squared, so for this one, let's isolate the c. If we subtract a from both sides, we'll end up with c is equal to b minus a. So now we got c all by itself, and this looks important. Let's put a box around it. And let's move the box up here. So what are we gonna do next? Okay, I think I know what we're gonna do next, and yes, it involves a right triangle. We're not gonna need this anymore. We don't need this anymore either, but let's label this radius as A. And we don't need this anymore, but let's label this radius as B. And now we're set up for the right triangle. Let's swing all three of these radiuses like this. And then let's drop this line perpendicular to this base. So this will be at right angles. This is the same length as the diameter of this semicircle, so it'll be equal to 2c. And if we complete this side right here, we'll have our right triangle. And I'm having trouble seeing it, let's make it yellow. So in our yellow right triangle, we have one side of 2c and another side of a plus b. We just gotta figure out what is this last side. Well, this portion is the same length as this a, so this will also be equal to a. And the entire distance from here to here is equal to b. So that leaves for this yellow piece, b minus a. That's gonna be the whole thing, b minus this portion, a. And now we have all three sides of our right triangle. We can now do the Pythagorean theorem. It'll be 2c squared plus b minus a squared equals a plus b squared. For the first term, the square will go to both the two and the c. So we'll have two squared, c squared. And two squared is equal to four. And then we're gonna to add to that b minus a squared, which means b minus a times b minus a. And then after we multiply this out, we get b squared minus 2ab plus a squared. And that'll be equal to a plus b squared, which is a plus b times a plus b. And that'll multiply to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now let's clean this up. Both sides have a b squared, so let's subtract b squared from both sides. And same thing for a squared, let's subtract a squared from both sides. Now I'm thinking we should get this c squared by itself, so let's add 2ab to both sides. On the left-hand side, all of this stuff is going to cancel out, and we'll be left with 4c squared. And then on the right-hand side, these two will cancel each other out. These two will cancel each other out. So we'll have 2ab plus 2ab, which is equal to 4ab. Next, we can divide both sides by 4, and we have c squared is equal to ab. So once again, we've got c squared alone like our other boxes, so let's put a box around this. And let's move this up here. So now we got three equations and three variables. We should be able to solve it from here. Oh! This b minus a matches this b minus a, so let's change this side to c. I don't know if this is the best method, but I kind of want to do Pythagorean theorem again. So let's see what it looks like. It'll be 2c squared plus c squared is equal to a plus b squared. 
we know the quantity 2c squared is equal to 4c squared, and then we can bring down the c squared. And then on the right-hand side, the quantity a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Next, 4c squared plus 1c squared is equal to 5c squared. And now I see something really cool. Let's copy this down. Let's put the c squared in parentheses and the ab in parentheses. First, for this ab, we know that c squared is equal to ab. So let's change this ab into c squared. And then for both of these c squareds, we know that c squared is equal to 72 over pi. So let's plug in 72 over pi for this one and 72 over pi for this one. And let's move all the 72 over pi's to the same side. Let's subtract two 72 over pi's from both sides. On the left-hand side, five 72 over pi's minus two 72 over pi's equals three 72 over pi's. And on the right-hand side, these cancel each other out. So we're left with a squared plus b squared. And next, we can clean up this left-hand side. The three will multiply by the 72. If it isn't immediately obvious why, we can think of this three as three over one. And now we're just multiplying fractions. 3 times 72 is equal to 216, and 1 times pi is equal to pi. And next, let's get rid of the pi in the denominator. Let's put parentheses around this side and multiply both sides by pi. On the left-hand side, the two pi's will cancel each other out, so we're left with 216. And on the right-hand side, the pi will distribute to both of these, so we'll have pi a squared plus pi b squared. Next, let's divide everything by 2. 216 divided by 2 is 108. And that'll be equal to pi a squared over 2 plus pi b squared over 2. And now this is what we were trying to solve for. Pi a squared over 2 plus pi b squared over 2 is the area of our two red semicircles. Let's plug in 108. And let's give it a label of square units. And this is the answer to our question. The total red area is equal to 108 square units. I really like this problem. I think it was brilliant. Speaking of Brilliant, let's talk about Brilliant. Brilliant has thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. And all of them are interactive, which is the most effective way to learn. People ask me all the time how to build out their math skills. And I honestly think the best way is to create a daily habit of learning. And Brilliant is a fun way to learn something every single day. Brilliant has lessons that go over every single thing that we did in this video all the geometry, and all the algebra. With enough practice, it'll all come naturally. If you want to try Brilliant.org, they have a free 30-day trial. You can visit Brilliant.org slash Animath or click on the link in the description. You can also get 20% off an annual premium plan. How exciting.